Hey everyone, I'm Allison. And I'm Bryce. And we're, we're Better, Better Half, Half Reviews. Reviews. And today we are looking at Mariposas. It's a brand new game from AEG. It's designed by Elizabeth Hargrave, and that may sound familiar because she's also the one who designed Wingspan. So Mariposas is about the migration of the monarch butterflies. So every spring they start out in Mexico and they spread out across North America. And every fall they fly back down to Mexico. So let's look at it. All right, so this is a setup of two player Mariposas. Uh, with the game you have extra butterflies, but you only start with a generation one butterfly. And as you go throughout the game, you will be hatching more butterflies and you always take from these cards first before you take from your general supply. So when you are moving your butterfly, you get to start with two movement cards and you get to pick one or the other and you can place it down and you can do that movement and the arrows let you know how many spaces you can move. So this is a four space and I can go one, two, three, four. And wherever you land is where you can collect different flower tokens. So this one is a baby's breath and I get to have one of those tokens. And some cards like this one has another space drawn next to it so I can collect from any adjacent space. So I can collect a sunflower. The thing that's important with these flowers is they are what help you um, discard to create more butterflies of a different generation. Okay, so you can create new generation butterflies, but you can only do that if you are next to these green spaces, which are called the milkweeds. When you land on a space adjacent to the milkweed, you can pay the matching number of flowers. So here we're going from generation one to generation two. We can pay two of the same flowers or any three flowers to put out a generation two butterfly. And so remember whenever you are creating a new butterfly, you always pick from the season cards first. And you don't have to put out all of your generation two butterflies before you start putting out your generation three butterflies. You can put them out in any order you want to. And there's different strategies depending on how soon you want to be upgrading some of your generations of butterflies. Do you want to start them up higher or lower? It really just depends. So when you do create a new butterfly, that's extra movement for you. So the next time, so you always have to redraw another card. I can put down this card that has two different movements of two. I can move the same butterfly two times or I can move each of them once. And again, remember wherever you stop, that is where you collect your specific flowers. So now let's talk about these spaces. These are called way, space, way station tokens and they have some special properties to them. So they are all flipped over. You do not know what is underneath it until you actually land on it. So when you land on it, you get to flip it over and it can provide either a movement bonus or you can gain cards from the way station board. Whenever you land on a way station, you roll the dice to determine what flower you're gonna get. Since it doesn't have a flower on its space, that's what the, the dice is for. Once you've landed on a way station, you can't gain that reward multiple times. You can only gain it once. So now let's talk about the seasons. You play through spring, summer, and fall. And with that, spring is the shortest season. You get four movements each. So you really need to plan ahead where you wanna be going. And when you're beginning the game, this is flipped over and it gives you different goals that you can try to go for to get points. So for example, in spring, this one says, if you have two butterflies and they're both above Atlanta, so you don't have any butterflies below the line of Atlanta, you get four points. So that's a lot of movement to get up to in only four moves. Or alternatively, uh, if you have three butterflies, one in each different color, the yellow, orange, and green, then you can get four points. So it just it gives you goals to go for during those four movements. And you can get both of these. If you are above Atlanta, you have all three butterflies and they're on the different colors. During your first season, you're putting out 
um, your level or your generation two butterflies once all the generation two butterflies have been removed from the summer card you will automatically flip that over you won't necessarily wait till the end of the season to flip it that's one good thing about this game that even if you're still playing in spring you can sometimes get a look ahead before summer even happens to kind of see what you may need to be working towards next season. And as you can see with the next season, you get an extra movement. So there's going to be five movement. You can do a little bit more. You can go a little bit farther. Some of the goals are even harder to gain. So this one, it says if you have three butterflies and none of them are below Richmond, so that's going even higher up the board, you can get six points, which is a lot. Or... If you are west of Lawrence, you can get two points for every butterfly. So west of Lawrence would be anything past that line. So that's not too many spaces. So that could be a little bit harder to do. Or any butterflies that are on the east coast get two points. So you really got to pick and choose what you want to do, mix and match. And also don't forget about the way station tokens that can earn you some points as well. And as you're progressing through the seasons, your earlier generations are dying off. So at the end of spring, your level one generation dies off and is removed from the board. At the end of summer, your level two generation butterflies die off and are removed from the board. So you want to make sure you have enough of the following generation coming out or else you're going to be hurting and not have enough butterflies on the board to try to get some of those points. Okay, so in the final season, there are six movements, so even more movements. And so this one says you get one point for every butterfly that is east of Houston, or four points if you have all of the different flower tokens. And then something else to know is on here, you have up to the three generation butterfly, but you do have a fourth generation butterfly. So if I was here and I made a fourth generation butterfly, you can also upgrade this one more time separately, a separate turn, to a fourth generation butterfly times two. So then there are two butterflies just on that one token. And so that can score you double points depending on what the goals are or if you make it all the way back to Mexico. To add more variability to the game, each season has extra goal cards. All right, so this is the Waystation board. So remember when you are playing the game and if your butterfly lands on one of these types of tokens, that means you can collect one of the corresponding. So if I landed on a green pod, I would get to take the green card. And the point of these is if you collect the whole set of a certain color, you can gain one of these different types of rewards. They may just be straight points, three points at the end of the game. This one, if you collect all the pink, you can earn an extra turn at the end of fall, which is a pretty big thing. And then this one, if you earn all the blue, you have one extra butterfly all the way down in Mexico at the game end, so that can get you lots of extra points, depending on what you do. And again, to add more variability, there are several other um, goal cards that you can switch these out with. There are different tiles that you can land on other than these types of cards you may end up getting an extra movement card. Each of these you can only use one time for the whole game. And you can only earn one of each for the whole game, the same as with the other way station cards. And each of the collected life cycle cards, whether you completed it or not, are worth one point. Okay, so that's how we played the game. Let's talk about how I feel about it. A lot of you are probably wondering, how does this compare to Elizabeth Hargrave's other game, Wingspan, which is a, a huge success, a big hit? Uh, we don't know. We because, haven't played it. <laughs> yeah, we haven't played Wingspan yet, so I'm sorry. We cannot compare them. Uh, but I do appreciate her themes and how she brings across different things with the environment and animals and everything and bringing awareness to that. With the theme, like, I've been in California during the... Um the migration of uh, the monarchs um, during the spring and stuff. And they have different like butterfly sanctuaries. And so you'll literally see groups of butterflies like this, like sitting on a tree. Like that's cool. It's like really cool. And I love how she kind of captured that migration in this game. What are some of the pros? So I really like the components in the game. Definitely. They're all very high quality. Um, 
the you know linen finished cards, the butter fleeples. Butter fleeples. I love it. <laughs> butter fleeples. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. How long did you think about doing that? Like an hour or so. <laughs> nice. All right. Butterfleeples. Butterfly. Meeples. Sure. Butterfleeples. Okay. Yeah. Just like how the butterflies are all nice and bright and colorful and the game board's also nice, bright and colorful. It just really attracts the eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's lots of really cool colors and I like just kind of like the frilliness of it too. Um, and the, yeah, the, Butter fleeples. Did I say that right? Yes. The butter fleeples are really cool. And I like that it's really easy to see. Like they are kind of small, but um, like you see it clearly and there's little numbers on them. And I like that, you know, the, the four meeple butterfly butter fleeples. I there got go. it. <laughs> can flip over and you can easily tell that it's like the two butterflies. And I like how they made that possible with the shape and not like messing it up or anything. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I also like the like organization of the game. Mm, mm -hmm. um, all the flowers come in their own little holders, and yes. it just kind of makes putting the game away kind of easy and clean up really easy. I really did like having those little those little trays in there, and that they have a little butterfly on it. But yeah, and that they have lids that actually work. And I like that. Yeah, you could just take it off and you just put it on the the table, and it's so easy to like set up and clean up. Yeah. Very nice. So what were some of your pros? Um, I feel like it was pretty easy to learn. Um, the yeah. rules weren't too hard and like each thing with whenever you flip over a card to find out what the new objectives are, they're pretty self-explanatory and like you, we only had to check like really quick on like one thing and mm -hmm. I mean it's super easy to learn and probably really easy to teach. So cons. The way station board. It is huge how big this thing is like i mean it's linen finish it looks super great i mean i love how it looks but i feel like i mean the board is already pretty big and then you have this gigantic cardboard sitting next to it and it, I, it just could have been tokens like the flowers or something and it could have had a much smaller footprint um Honestly, I don't even think you need it at all. All it does is hold the different types of cards. Well, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, the cards could have been tokens. They could have had their own little small tray or whatever. I just feel like it just took up way too much space. It looks beautiful, and I like how it looks, but it's just huge. Uh, what else? Um, even though the board looks really cool, and I love the colors, I love all the flowers and everything on it, I think the board is a little busy for me. Um, especially when you get all the different color um, butterflies on there. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it gets pretty busy. I feel like before I had played it, I was like, wow, that is kind of busy. But like after starting to play it, it didn't seem too bad for me. So obviously right now we've only played a two player. And there are the way station tokens that are spread throughout on the map. And they are flipped over. And you don't know what's under it until you go all the way out there. And then get your butterfly there and flip it over. When it's two player, there's less of us out there to like go and venture all the way out just to find out that it's the wrong color or it's like an extra movement and not one of the cards that you need. In like a three or four player game, I could see how, you know, it's nice not knowing what those are, but there's also a lot of people kind of spreading out across the board, flipping those over. Our first playthrough, we didn't really even focus on those much at all because it was just so hard to get to, and it kind of just didn't seem like there was much of a point. Uh, but on our other playthroughs, we heard about uh, a little al al alternative on VGG, Board Game Geek, where they said, if you're playing two-player, play with the Waystation tokens flipped over. And I felt like that improved the game so much for the two-player game. But I, I do like with the, the way station tokens flipped over, it felt like there was a little bit more of goals to go for. Yeah, in, in the two-player game with them flipped over, it did provide an incentive to at least go farther away and try to get some of those farther mm -hmm. way stations. Yeah, so having them flipped face down to start, I think is just a weakness in, in the two-player game. I think if I'm going to play two player, I will always play with the way station tokens flipped face up. Uh, and then maybe like another negative would be 
I just wish there are more varied movement options. I know you can only have so many and you don't want to have deck bloat. Um, but even as like a two player game, we, we filtered through the whole deck. Yeah, we sometimes. filtered through the whole deck and sometimes it just felt like I kept drawing the same thing where it was just like move one space three times and I had like that over and over and over again. And I'm like, okay, I want something where I can move like five spaces or maybe if there's a three and three, I know there's a three and one, I know there's a two and two, but mm -hmm. if there's some, some other variations on movement, that would yeah. be interesting. I do like in the game that if you have two of the same card, because you only have two cards at a time, most of the time. If you have two of the same, you can discard and draw again. So I do like that you can do that, but yeah, I wish there was different numbers and other options. All right, so what's your overall feel of the game? So I'm really torn about this game. Um, objectively, it should be a game that I really like. Um, there's, you know, pretty decent strategy. There's lots of ways to win or score points. Um, you can gain more information during the game that could change your strategy. These are all things I like in a game, but there's just something about it and I can't quite put my finger on but it just doesn't resonate with me. I'm not excited to get this game out mm. over and over again. I'm glad I've played it. Um, if people come over and want to learn it, like I'd be glad to show it to them. But it's just not on my list of something or a game that I want to just keep pulling out mm. and keep getting to the table. So for me, um, I do still want to bring this to the table because... I want to figure out more of the strategies and like try testing out different things to go for or not go for and you know see what's the best way because when we first started this game like I'm so used to games where you're like you can get points by doing this you can get points by doing that go do everything and so I tried doing that with this game and there's lots of different ways to get points but you really can't do everything you've got to really pick and choose and that was like that's true. You can get a lot of points doing certain things, and then you can spend a lot of time doing things that mm -hmm. seem like they're getting you points, but then you're only getting like one or two points. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, that was something I wasn't expecting with this, where like you really need to limit yourself on what you're actually going to do, and I divided myself too much, and I ended up burning through. But you also have to be willing to change that focus based on the movement cards you draw yeah that's true so, so so with that like that's why i still want to bring it out to the the table and i still want to play it more because i want to figure it out more um yeah it may not be like my most favorite thing but i like the look of it and i just want to try it more all right so that's mariposas let us know what you guys think about it down in the comments below do you like it better at higher player counts have you tried any other variations I know I've asked AEG about a solo variant and other people have as well. I really hope that they figure something out with that because I feel like that would be a great way to kind of test out different strategies. Do it, please. So be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Bryce. I'm Allison. And we're Better Half Reviews. Happy gaming. Have fun.